Hello everybody, I'm Steve Burton. I'm the director of the Marine Mammal Stranding and Population Assessment Team here at Florida Atlantic University at Harbor Branch. Today we're going to give you a behind the scenes tour of the Marine Mammal Rescue Team and one of our tools, the Marine Mammal Rescue Ambulance. So come along. The Marine Mammal Stranding Team responds to dolphin and whale strandings in Indian River, St. Lucie, and Martin County. However, we will also go all over the state of Florida when asked upon by our stranding partners and National Marine Fisheries. Now, when we do travel, sometimes we take our Marine Mammal Ambulance. It is a quad cab truck, meaning it has four seats in the front that allow our staff and volunteers to safely travel to their destination. We use this marine mammal ambulance just like you would use a human ambulance, except we're using it for dolphins and whales. So basically it's a rescue truck. So if you look inside here, we have desks and compartments where we keep supplies such as gauze, uh, tape measures, blood tubes, needles, anything that we'd want to use to get a sample from a live patient. We can also use this truck if Florida Fish and Wildlife needs extra help with their manatees, but we mainly focus on dolphins and whales. As we work our way to the side of the truck, you may notice that we have compartments here. Inside each compartment has other tools or resources that we use in rescues. You can see caution tape, um, stretchers, sponges. You may see some buckets, and we also have some kiddie pools here. The kiddie pools is what we can fill water in and have a live animal sit in while we transport them to one of the few rehab centers in Florida. So basically this is a transport truck. And one of the neat factors of this transport truck is we have a crane system. Oh, check this out. We've got uh, one of our dolphin, training dolphins here. Yes, it's a fake dolphin. Uh, but we use this for our staff to train with as well as our volunteers as well and we can put it in a stretcher and use our crane to lift the animal up and down and back and forth into the ambulance. So let's show that off to you right now. We use a controller, just like kids use controllers for their video games, and as you can see, we can go up and down, out and in, and left and right. So let's take a look at that. Let's bring the animal, or the animal out or in. You can see the crane moves here. Our fake dolphin in the stretcher comes on out, and we, we can carry up to 4,000 pounds of weight. Now, dolphins on average weigh 300 to 600 pounds. They can get larger than that, but that's the average. Some of the other animals we respond to in our area are pilot whales and pygmy sperm whales. They can get anywhere from 800 pounds to 2,000 pounds. That's about one ton for 2,000 pounds. As you can see on our crane here, we can safely lift 4,000 pounds, which is two tons. All right. Now, if you've seen the movie Dolphin Tail 1 or Dolphin Tail 2, you may have seen Winter or Hope in the back of the rescue trucks. Well, that was our old vehicle. This is our new one, and the highlight of that is this, the crane that we're working with. All right, so you can see we can put it right back inside. Now, one of the parts of the dolphin I'd like to show you is what we call the rostrum, and that's the snout or the front of the dolphin here. Basically, it's his jaw bone. He has uh, 72 to 88 sharp teeth in there, top and bottom jaw, and for a dolphin, they're conical shaped. So we'll learn more about that as well while we work over to this side and we put our fake dolphin away here. There you go, buddy. And if you want to take a better look inside here, we've got jump seats for our staff and volunteers to be safely seat belted in our ambulance. We've got water tanks on each side so we can put the foam pads down for a live animal, put a kiddie pool in here, and the dolphin would sit, or the small whale, in a little bit of water. That way we can keep the animal moist while we transport it somewhere across the state of Florida when approved by National Marine Fisheries. Now I mentioned the key word today, rostrum. We're gonna learn a little bit more about that, so come on this way. Now we do respond and do rescues. We respond to strandings, 
But unfortunately, we marine mammals, they do have a life, and sometimes they pass away. So we do what's called a necropsy. That's similar to a human autopsy, but for the terminology for animals, it's called a necropsy. So when we respond to a dead animal, we'll still use our marine mammal truck, and we'll bring it back to Harbor Branch and do a full necropsy. We're trying to find the cause of death of that animal. Sometimes we can find it, sometimes we can't. But the story I want to tell you about now is Chickpea, a little dolphin that lived in the Indian River Lagoon here in Vero Beach. And in 2015, the public saw a little dolphin entangled in fishing line. Our team, along with other stranding agencies, did a National Marine Fisheries approved rescue where we were actually able to go out there and catch Cheap CP and his mom and disentangle CP. Now the entanglement was on his rostrum, as I showed you with the fake dolphin back there. That's the jawbone. But the reality was it was only on his top jaw. So we were able to disentangle him, let him back out in the wild, and he had a great couple more years. But unfortunately, in the year 2017, we got a call about a dead dolphin down in Fort Pierce. When we arrived on scene to pick up the carcass, we automatically saw that it was CP. Now, CP had some more entanglement issues on him. We brought the carcass back to Harbor Branch and did a full necropsy on him. And if you come on over here, this is actual a CP skull. All right, and this is the top part of the rostrum, the top jaw, and you may see some indentations here. That is from the original entanglement from 2015. When we turn his skull over, you can see what the damage from that fishing line did to him as he was growing up as a baby. The line was wrapped around here, and as he grew, it started to dig into his jawbone. He actually lost a couple teeth here, and this teeth was in his gum line like that. So what we ask you to do to protect dolphins and other marine life out in the Indian River Lagoon is if you see trash, similar to the rope here or the discarded fishing line, please pick it up. Put it in the recycling bin. If you're out there fishing on the river in the ocean and you see dolphins or whales swimming by your boat, just bring in your line, take a lunch break, let the dolphins swim by, and then throw your line back out there. And then you don't may not entangle a dolphin at all. So we ask you to do that. If you also see a dolphin, a whale, or a manatee in distress, we ask that you call the Fish and Wildlife hotline. It's 888. 404-3922. Again, that number is 888-404-3922. It's manned by a live operator 24-7 for the state of Florida. So if you see a dolphin in distress and you're on the water, call that number, tell them what you're seeing, how many animals, is it alive or dead, and they will get a rescue group like FAU Harbor Ranch or one of the other 17, 18 stranding groups in Florida to respond to that animal. FAU Harbor Branch is proud to be involved in the rescue and conservation of marine mammals in the state of Florida. We hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at our marine mammal ambulance. To learn about our research and outreach programs, please visit our website. There you can access our virtual resources and even find out how you can see our Marine Mammal Ambulance during tours and other special events.